God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The message is entitled for today, Restoring the Kingdom as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord. Let's start with Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when the disciples had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. The disciples wanted to know the time when the kingdom would be restored, that is, the when. However, they missed the most important part, which is not the when, but the what. The what, you may ask, yes. What is the kingdom of God? If you are eager for something to be restored, you should know what you're trying to restore. First of all, they qualified it by saying the kingdom to be was that of Israel. Israel. Was that really the same thing that Jesus is talking about? It's interesting that Jesus only uses kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. So where did this kingdom of Israel come from? The answer? Welcome to selective hearing. Hearing what you want to hear. The religious leaders of the time were looking forward to the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, that is, the government, the land. But that kingdom was lost. And God promised a better kingdom, which could not be lost. A kingdom that would last forever. What is that better kingdom? They should have listened a little bit more carefully to Jesus when he kept talking about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Consider for the moment what we pray in the Lord's Prayer. The second petition of the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come. Martin Luther writes for us this explanation. What does it mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. Yes, the kingdom of God comes without our prayer. God's kingdom is going to come. But the important part is that it comes to us. So Martin Luther then continues to teach how does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. When we receive the Holy Spirit, that's the answer. So, no wonder why the disciples were confused. For they were only on day 40 of the resurrection, that is, the ascension of our Lord, not the 50th day. For Jesus tells them to wait until the Holy Spirit comes, and that is the day of Pentecost, and that's 50 days after the resurrection. So, they didn't understand about the kingdom of God because they hadn't yet received the Holy Spirit. So let's go back to this kingdom of God. And this time, instead of going to the small catechism of Martin Luther, let's go to the large catechism of Martin Luther for a little bit more depth. Martin Luther writes, what is the kingdom of God? Answer, simply what we hear above in the creed, namely that God sent his son Christ, our Lord, into the world to redeem and deliver us from the power of the devil, to bring us to himself, and to rule us as a king of righteousness, life, and salvation against sin, death, and an evil conscience. To this end, he also gave his Holy Spirit to deliver this to us through his holy word and to enlighten and strengthen us in faith by his power. So the kingdom of God 
is trusting in Christ and his work of salvation, which, by the way, is that beautiful gift given to us through faith, which we receive from the Holy Spirit. So let's go back to the disciples' original question. Are you going to restore the kingdom? And if we leave it at kingdom and not kingdom of Israel, the answer is yes. Through faith in Jesus Christ, you have the kingdom of God. But that answer that Jesus gave to the disciples focuses them upon the what. What are they going to receive? The kingdom of God through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when will we receive the kingdom? Martin Luther continues in the large catechism, the coming of God's kingdom to us takes place in two ways. First, it comes here in time through the word and faith. And second, in eternity, it comes through the final revelation. So yes, we have the kingdom of God now through faith and a not yet because we will again receive the second part, you could say, when Christ comes again on that last day. For Jesus is coming again, as the angels reminded us in verse 11, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So the when, now to the answer that Jesus gave. Verse 7, Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. It is not for you to know, nor is it for me to know. Why would Jesus say that? Well, he realizes people are obsessed with timing. The timing of the when. But there are more important things than the when. People have to put their faith and trust in God and receive that faith as a gift. And that is the kingdom of God. So instead of being concerned about the timing, Jesus instead moves us to focus on the what. After we receive the gift of faith, we need to continue to gather around God's word and be strengthened in that faith so that we don't lose this precious gift of God's kingdom. But we also have opportunities to share that faith with others so others may also know of God's kingdom. So we need to hear again what the angel said to the disciples from Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Men of Galilee... Why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So do we stand just gazing into heaven? We need to hear these words of the angels because God refocuses us to hear on earth. Because we value this gift of faith, this kingdom of God given to us, we know we need to continue to gather around God's holy word and celebrate this day of ascension. And because we value this gift of faith, this kingdom of God given to us, we now have the opportunity to tell others how precious this gift is. And again, because we value this gift of faith, this kingdom of God given to us, we need to stop looking upward and thinking, what about our place in heaven? Instead, we need to keep our focus on our neighbors around us who are in need. We don't have to worry about when Jesus is going to return because we know he has promised that he will return. And we know that the kingdom of God is right here with us, right now, as Christ is indeed with us. So we continue to put our faith and trust in Christ alone. 
In his holy name, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.